predict the future. How do you make a good impression? And how do you unravel the mystery of the toilet roll? Persuade your friends not to steal your drink. You know the problem. You're in the kitchen, you've got your favourite drink on the table, your mate comes in the back door, you have to go upstairs. How can you stop them from stealing your drink? Gaz, any ideas? Mm, poison it or something like that. Oh, well, I have a wonderful how here. This is the how. That is my drink. That is my bottle of drink and the glass next to it. Yeah. Now then, I'm going to persuade you from drinking that. If you would like to lift the bottle, I'll turn my back and try to pour yourself a glass of it. <laughs> oh, so I can't open it either. Oh, God, no. no. Can't drink. Can't drink it. You can't drink it. All right. If you want to know how I did it, this is what you do. You get a full bottle of drink, put some holes in it wherever you want, around the side, up and down and across, and then if your friends try to lift the bottle, open the top, it acts like a sort of tap. Can you see? And the water floods out, and then if you put the tap back on, the top back on rather, not the tap, then it stops, open the top, and so it goes on, and that's how you can persuade them not to drink it. How can something cease to exist? I want you to take a look at this computer screen. Now, on here is quite a large letter T. Can you see it? No, no, you can't. No. no. But now you can. Now it's started to move. Oh, yes. You see it now? Yeah. But the moment it stops moving... Yes. Uh -huh. ..you can see it no longer. The right. naked eye can see it no longer. It ceases, in a manner of speaking, to exist. And lots of animals and insects and, and fishes use a similar sort of camouflage to hide from their enemies, to rest in peace, because their body colouring is almost identical to their habitat, to the environment in which they live. And as long as they stay still, they can't be seen. Look at another example. In this tank here, there are, I'm assured, at least a dozen leaf insects. Now, I've been looking in there for about an hour, and so far, I've only managed to find one, and that's that little chap here. So the leaf insects proving perfectly how something can appear to cease to exist and proving how well this particular how has worked. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. How do you play thin air? Have a listen to this. Uh, Richard, presumably no tricks. You really are playing thin air. I was playing music out of thin air just then. What is this? It's called a theremin, and it was the world's first electronic musical instrument. So what, what are you doing? What's going on well, here? Well, that hand controls the volume. This hand here. As you put it into that loop, it gets quiet. Yeah. As you bring it out, it gets louder. Oh, yeah. And then your right hand will be controlling the pitch. And as you take it nearer that aerial, the pitch will go up and down. Oh, yeah. So that's how you tune it. All oh, right. So you play the notes by changing the notes higher that's and closer. That's right. Now that. And volume there. Volume so on that one. <laughs> yeah. so how does it work? Well, it's a bit like an early radio set in some ways, and instead of tuning it by twiddling a knob, you tune it by upsetting the electrical waves in it just by the presence of your body in front of it. So you really are playing so thin air? So you're really playing thin air. Well, it's obvious that I've not really got full control over the thing, and it could go bananas at any yeah, time. Yeah, right. l l let's silence it for just a second. Oh, will, you, will you demonstrate the true well, principles? Is it, is it one of the first synthesizers? It's the first synthesizer ever. The first electronic musical instrument, the first synthesizer. Well, take it away, Richard. Right, let's try. You stand just there. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> Richard, thank you very much indeed. And that's how anybody, well, if you've got one of these things, can play thin air.
Wow, very good, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Now, how can you make a piece of paper spin? Guys, come back to the table because you'll enjoy this one, I can assure you. All you need is one piece of airmail paper, very yeah. light paper. Right, place it down on a flat surface. Fold from one corner to another to make a diagonal. Yeah. And make the crease. Turn it round and do the same for the other diagonal. Doesn't have to be terribly accurate, that. OK. Now, fold it out again. Take the long side, fold up about a centimetre. Make a very strong crease there so it sticks up. Yeah. Turn it round, do exactly the same thing. You want to do that again to the narrow sides. Again, about a centimetre, sticking upwards. You're trying to form a shallow tray. So you've done that to all four sides. Then you go around nipping the corners, so you sort of squeeze them together. So unfold them and squeeze them? Yes, that's right. OK, we've got right. that. OK, mine's done. OK. Now, I shall show you how to make the paper spin. Stand up, yeah. put the tray facing outwards, like that. Put your fingers in the middle and turn quickly. Oh, <laughs> oh let's oh, try again. Fingers where the diagonals cross and... Oh, not no. bad. I think I've got it. You, you, you try. Ready, Chopper? Go on, Fred. Go on, Fred. Well, oh, sort of. Here we go, there. then. Here we go. The grandmaster of them all. Can Top make this paper spin? Oh, he's off. Oh, he's beaten me to it. <laughs> right, then, dinner now -ish. There you go. Oh, oh well then. done. Keep going, keep going, guys. And the reason that it works is simply because the paper starts to bend over and it makes a sort of blade shape and that's what keeps it going round. Oh. I've got the a master, cracker here. The Sit down, please, Toppy. Sit will, down. I will, I will. Good boy. <laughs> how can you make a good impression? This how is dedicated to carpet layers everywhere, and in particular to the genius who invented this device. Now, you know the problem. You're, you're laying a carpet in the lounge, and you've got to get round this very awkward door frame here. You see the awkward shape? How can you possibly cut your carpet so that it fits exactly round that? Very difficult until the invention of this, which is simply movable plastic slats on a central column. And all you do is lay it against the awkward shape that you want to cut out on your carpet and press. And the slats move in, and you get the perfect impression of the door frame. Brilliant, isn't oh, it? Mm, Superb. Yes. Simple. And that, in fact, led to the invention of this, which is very much a fun item, really, but it's where the making a good impression comes in. Watch. I'll take my glasses off, I think, for this bit. All it is, it's the same principle, but it's blunted pins instead of plastic slats. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Not a pretty sight, Fred. Let me try. OK. Very good. I'll try it with my hand. Yeah. Nice. Oh. All right, then. All right, then. Man with the face should do this. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, 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 wait for it. Wait yep. for it. <laughs> <laughs> and come round here, chaps, for the finale, because this is our little message to carpet layers everywhere. Come on in, Shift Toppy. Over, Fred. Carpet layers everywhere, and the man who invented that very clever machine, and the message is quite simply... Are you ready? Oh! oh. <laughs> now, how can I predict the future? I can gaze into this crystal ball and quite confidently say that this is going to be yet another brilliant how. Right, how can you predict the future? Two balls, identical, one higher than the other. What will happen if I drop them both at the same time? Guess. Lower ball will hit the table before the higher ball. OK, let's drop them. <sighs> Correct, Gaz. Confidently predict the future. Now, your turn, Fred. Right. Piece of string, a weight on the end. If I hold it out, what will happen if I let go? It'll swing backwards and forwards. Marvellous. Uh, Marvellous. Simple, isn't it? Yeah. But where's this leading, Carol? Ah, right, OK. Let's lead you over to here. I have two pendulum here, both of identical length. If I hold one out further than the other, what do you think will happen? Uh, they'll swing out of sync. Well, one swings further than the other, but if you watch carefully, you see that they both swing back to the middle at exactly the same time. Oh. Hmm. Now, if I try one with a shorter length, and let those two go. The one with the shorter length swings much, much faster. And we can use this predictability of a pendulum in a grandfather or a grandmother clock, because inside every clock like this is a pendulum 
which swings. Now, by knowing the length of it, we can tell how long it will take to go through a full swing and multiply that up using cogs and wheels, and you can use it to tell the time. Totally predictable. How about this? This is another pendulum. It swivels around this nozzle here. This bit is fixed, this bit is loose. If I swing it, can I predict what it will do? Let's try. Oh! It goes round, and one bit swivels faster than the other. Round, 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 round it goes. Oh, this is Rott's pendulum. It's completely unpredictable. And it is, in fact, a demonstration of what chaos can mean. I cannot predict its future at all. Now, if you thought that was interesting, get this. Here's a how. How do you unravel the mysteries of the toilet roll? What mysteries are you talking about? Yeah. The great mystery. The ultimate question concerning toilet rolls. You're looking at me blank, aren't you? Yes. Stay here. You lot come with me to the smallest room. Because over here, I can quite patently demonstrate the problem in hand. Now then, excuse me. <laughs> right. You know what might be the problem? You go to the loo. And you come to the bit where you need the loo roll, and you go to tear off the loo roll, and what happens? Look, it splits into two pieces like this, and you try to tear off another one again like this, and it splits into two again, and you just can't get proper two-ply roll. Why is this? Well, look, it seems that the whole loo roll has been manufactured out of sink. Mm. See that gap? The, the perforations don't seem to line up. And no matter how hard you try, well, you're just lumbered with single-ply tissue. No good for anyone. Well, the problem is that it's made out of two layers of tissue, a top layer and a bottom layer. And if you look at this here, you can see that what actually happened is that the bottom layer is on top of the top layer. And, of course, the top layer should be on top of the bottom layer, the bottom underneath and the top on top. So all you have to do is to switch the bottom from the top to underneath the top. So it's the top becomes the top and the bottom becomes the bottom, so the top and the bottom switch places. So all you do is take the bottom, which is now the top, flip it over until it's underneath, and the top becomes the top, the bottom becomes the bottom, you tear that off, Top's happy. <laughs> That's how. And so we come to the last how in the series, and this is actually a mystery how. We know nothing about it. It's something that's been done by the how production team. We know we've got these three boxes. We know we've got to get inside them. Okay. We've got to do it before the end of the programme. Yeah. Okay. How we <laughs> get out of this. Oh, no. And where it's all going to lead to. None of us knows. Oh, it smells a bit funny, Fred. Okay. <laughs> Oh, hey! Gloves. Something on a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it smells revolting. <laughs> and some instructions. It's a, a fluffy gentleman. <laughs> Mystery how. Oh, lime Here's right. the how. How can a fruit get you thrown out of a hotel? Fred's right. introduction. This is a durian. This is a durian. It's a, durian. durian. it's a fruit which grows in parts of Southeast Asia. Example, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines. One of the world's most expensive fruits and can cost up to £200 for a kilo. So it's considered a great luxury. However, it does have one drawback. Three, invite Carol and Gaz to describe the fruit and guess the drawback. Very quickly, Carol. Um, I would say that the drawback is something to do with the prickles on the outside. Yeah, okay. Gaz. Like uh, well, it smells bad enough to be not the kind of thing you want to open up anywhere, let alone a hotel. Instruction four, instruct Carol and Gaz to cut it in half, all do it, show to camera and describe. Do we got to put the gloves on? Oh, gloves. I think you should. Yes. Yeah, I think it's we very are sharp. Too. Put mine on before touching it. Ooh. I've never cut ever the, cut this. done anything quite like this before. It's cut. probably going to end in tears. It's open. Is yours open? Oh, grief. Right. Okay, <laughs> describe it well. Um, it's it's oh, a heck. most peculiar looking thing inside. It seems to have some sort of fruit or something here and there, and it smells absolutely yeah. revolting, but it's great luxury, apparently. It's like a mouldy um, conqueror. It says Ew. here, eating the oh. durian has been described as eating the most delicious strawberry mousse in the smelliest public toilet. <laughs> Instruct everyone to scoop out the soft, fleshy pulp around the stones and have a good big mouthful. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. All to do it, describe reactions. Oh, Lord. we really got to eat this. Go on. Oh, brave man, Fred. Oh, God. <laughs> Additional information for Fred while eating. The durian's the only fruit eaten by tigers. It is banned by most Far Eastern hotels. Oh, that's how fruit can get you thrown out of a hotel. It's awful. And that is how for now. <laughs>